in Puerto Rico. You've had a successful business background. Yes, Can absolutely. You know story a little bit? I think that's what's the most important to me is like people that are building personal brands right now. Yeah, for sure. You know, for me, I admire people who before the personal brand have actually built a real business, have lived life, have the scars to prove it. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, when I hear, look, watch Patrick, learn about Patrick, a lot of the people that I'm, you know, either mentoring or friends with that are like real entrepreneurs that are out there building and struggling and pushing through and building their business. Like, they're all like, what, you're gonna go see Patrick, man? Like, you know, you, like they're all super excited, man. Awesome. A lot of people on our team are, are huge, huge fans, so. Pat calls it the trifecta. Yeah, he yeah. is. How are you, man? Hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yes. Oh, you man. seem like a very genuine, authentic guy. Ah, oh, thanks, bro. I've seen you so many times, I'm like, this guy seems very sincere. Oh. Yeah, I was just telling Mario, um, you know, I, I just came out, I, I just interviewed uh, Susie Batiste, who built a uh, company called Poopery. Have you heard of this? I have not. Wow, she built this thing, no, raised no money to 400 million in revenue wow. on her own, built an amazing team. She she bought a church and re you know, rebuilt the whole church, renovated. So we came here to, to meet with her. And then when I, came, when I didn't know you were out here, and then like my team is like multiple people from different directions, because I put it on my Insta story, like, you gotta go see Patrick, you gotta go see Patrick. And one of the things that I love the most is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of these personal brands, entrepreneurs out there, but the ones that I love the most are the people who, before building a brand, they were genuinely building businesses and they were building teams and they were creating really, important work, work in the world. You build a business. Yeah, right? so for me, I just love yeah. crea creating those kind of relationships we more than beyond that. social yeah. media, right? No, no, we were doing this before page. the gram, you know? No doubt. <laughs> no, that's the great thing, you know, the platform yeah. today allows you to tell the story, but some people uh, kind of look at it and they think that's how you make a living. Right. You make a living doing this. Yeah. This is how he made his money. Yeah. You know, he sells courses. Yeah. But you actually ran a business. Right. And, and, and we call that a trifecta. We call that a trifecta. Somebody that, because a lot of people create content, they have theories. Buy my course because I read 200 books, here's what I think you should do. Yeah. Then there's others that they work with a guy like you and they saw what you did. Yeah. So I witnessed what you did. Yeah. Then there's a guy that applied and actually did what he did to build a business. That's what we yeah. call a trifecta. So very cool. I'm glad so you're I'm here. So I'm here in the trifecta, yes. man. Come on in, let me show the, you what the, we got going on here. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. Yeah, that's, you uh, see that? that's a... Uh, so this is, just so you know, it's made with all car parts. No way. Everything's made out of car parts and different cars. Like you'll see it says Honda. Everything is from cars. Gerard, we're, we're all data. Everything to us is data. We track everything back three years, percentage of growth. It's crazy. It's purely accidental. It's probably for you like yourself as well. It's like, let's start content, see what happens. Nothing is like, we're going to one day build a, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah, one of the no, the number one channel for entrepreneurs. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, pretty pretty spectacular. So I did behind the scenes, like I was creating content. Say you're within the company. Uh, you want to hit the lights, Mario, yeah, on the other yeah, side. Yeah. If you're within PHP and you're one of our agents, I created content that's not living publicly. It's living private. Only you and I have access to it. Mm -hmm. And then one day, I'm starting to see what people are doing. Yeah. A uh, guy named Ron Paul raises I know $6 Ron million Paul. Dollars on, uh, Inst on uh, MySpace in 24 hours. Becomes a Guinness Book of World Record. Then Obama sees what he does in 04. Obama uses it in 08 and goes, raises $2 billion, becomes president. And then Trump uses Twitter. I mean, today, if you're not taking advantage of this free technology that you have, you're going to be yeah. left behind. So, yeah. And I'm a private guy. I'm not, if you notice me... You won't see me um, in a lot of the social media communities, like circulating and going speaking everywhere you want. I'm a, I'm a pretty, you know, kind of building my own thing, but uh, social media makes you. You have to. Yeah. If you don't control the narrative. Somebody else is going to tell your story yeah. to other people. So you got to get out there and do it. So. And these are all the interviews I've been on uh, YouTube? Yeah, these are all the interviews. Oh, wow. Like Tony Hawk, man. What a legend. Are you a skater? I was. Yeah? Yeah, so that's huge, man. Tony was such a huge legend I looked up to. He changed the game. He changed the game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then this is, it's an office slash studio, because if I have office meetings, I'll do it in my conference room. But again, if we need to shoot, that pops. <laughs> so fucking we need cool. To shoot, this pops. Well, yeah, it's so fun. It takes so much time to set up. Yeah. Take down. Yeah. You know this. Yeah. Set up, yeah. take down, yeah. and take. Perfectionists don't want to leave it up. 
I love Tupac's up in there. <laughs> I always say that line, you know, I may not change the world, but I'll spark the mind. That's, that's right. That interview's an epic interview. Yeah. That's, a, that's to me. He I'm, was a revolutionary of a guy. Yeah, he really was. He wasn't trying to be the guy that was going to change the world. He was trying to get his audience to kind of hear him out. Yeah. He could have been a philosopher. He could have been a philosopher. He could have been a philosopher that day. Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, today's Tupac is the womanizer. Cool, let's go party. Yeah. That's like Kanye now. He don't know if you're going to get the radical Kanye, yeah. the rapper Kanye, the philosopher Kanye. He's being a very, you know, ever since he's been on his, like, the spiritual. And then some people just think he's the crazy Kanye. See, I don't yeah. mind that, though. To me, I, yeah, I, I love think it. an artist has to be a little yeah. bit off. Yeah. Well, Steve Jobs said it best, right? Like, the crazy ones are the ones that actually will be the ones that change the no world. No doubt about it. Some people just want to make money and live the life they want to live, and they're not trying to, you know, improve the economy or create jobs or... They'll watch us and say, I don't care if you call me an influencer and I'm just creating content and I'm not running a business. But then the other guys who do, history books is going to write about the guys that made a change and a real change where somebody looked at you and says, oh my gosh, I'm following this content here. Look at this guy. He yeah. built a business, young guy. Mm -hmm. He's authentic about the fact that he lost money. He brought it back up. I want to go build a business. He creates a business, creates 3,000 jobs just because he watched you inspire him. And that 22-year-old kid today is a 35-year-old CEO on the cover of Forbes magazine 13 years from now. Yeah. That's the real impact because right. he's always going to remember yeah. the impact you made. Yeah. Just like you probably remember coming up who made the impact in your life yeah. when you were younger. I was looking at all these influencers that were entrepreneurs that were doing what we're talking about, that were selling people on courses, but I was like, what did they actually build and what had they done other than just regurgitating what they read? And I was really frustrated at that time and I was like I want to not just be a thought leader I want to be a show leader I want to show people what it means to genuinely be a leader so I went back to Nork and I built an incubator in the middle of the hood in, in Nork in Nork and I decided to start I didn't know how I was going to do it but I decided to build a community teach people entrepreneurship invite them in and build, build an art gallery start shooting content and show people like you can in the middle of Nork I was doing this and I loved it. It was fulfilling. But over time, I went through a, my, a girl that I thought I was going to marry. Really bad breakup. And then from that, my, my team, I didn't realize how much of a toll this was going to take on my team. And because there was just bodegas. And there's no, like, from a fitness standpoint, like, health-wise, they, were, they weren't filling their... They were, like, not being healthy. And I think that really took a toll. And... So, cause there's like no, you can't even go get a juice like locally. Like there's nowhere to really, it's just bodegas and, <laughs> and barbed wire. So I ended up leaving my home, didn't have a home. I left the home to, to, to my ex-girlfriend. It was going through a lot of things personal that I never told anybody about. So all this is happening and eventually I met a Navy SEAL. It was a dream of mine. I flew to do a Leaders Create Leaders episode in San Diego. It was Memorial Day weekend. This is how God works. It's unbelievable. Memorial Day weekend it happens to walk into a bar and here's this big guy that walks in with an army hat, another guy that looks like Sylvester Stallone and this, and this girl. And I'm like, I immediately I say to this guy, I say, excuse me, did, have you served for our country? And the girl's like, oh, yes, he did. 30 years. He just got out. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, oh, wow. I was like, listen, sir. I was like, I just want to say to you, in a world right now in this country where everyone is admiring these celebrities, these people on social media, I'm like, you're the real hero. You're the person that really needs to be celebrated. So I thanked him and my uncle also, like 9-11. So yes, it's, I, I've always been that way, you know? But I wanted to know. I really genuinely look up to this, these type of individuals. So I wanted to say to him, like, what caused you to serve 30 years in the military, to sacrifice your life? Why did you do that? And he said to me, one word, freedom. He said, you see all these people? We see everybody has the opportunity here in this country. We do it for your freedom. And it struck me, man. And I was like, wow. And there was a guy next to him that was the Navy SEAL. I got them a couple beers. I hung out with them. And that day, was, I was so happy. I leave. I'm like, oh, I can't believe I met a Navy SEAL. I can't believe I met this person. Monday comes. It's Memorial Day. We're celebrating. I go home. Two weeks goes by. They had asked me about what I had been doing and everything. Two weeks go by. I wake up in the morning. My COO calls me early in the morning. And he's like, gee, there's like an assassin here at Founders. 
waiting for you. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he, look, he looks like a damn a Sylvester Stallone Rambo looking motherfucker. I'm like, no way. I'm like, oh my God, wait, could that be? No, there's a way. So I drive down, I walk in, founders our incubator, and there is Paul. And Paul is that Navy SEAL that wouldn't talk to me too much, but listened the entire time that day. And I'm like, Paul, what, are you, what would bring you from San Diego to Tanork, New Jersey? Like, he goes, I'm going to be honest with you. We don't get paid a lot. So it was actually, I had to figure out how to get here. I'm on duty, so I'm not supposed to leave San Diego. But for some reason, after I met you, I felt a calling that I can help you. And I needed to come. I needed to see this. I needed to come meet you because I feel like I can help you. That I can help you. Yeah. He's telling me. I can help you to wow. me. So I, I'm like, I'm enamored. I sit down. I look him in the eyes. And he looks me back and he says, so how are you? So I was like, to be honest with you, I'm fucking stressed out, man. I'm broken inside. I don't know how I'm going to figure this whole thing out. My team is stressed out. They're unhealthy. I'm unhealthy. I'm drained. I'm just like pouring into him, pouring into him. I'm just being freaking telling him everything to the point where I'm basically crying to Paul saying like, I fucking feel like I'm trying to be the best leader that I can possibly be for this whole city, for this community, for my team. I'm doing this personal branding thing that I've never done. I've been a businessman my whole life. I never put a camera in front of me. I never needed that. And I'm, at the same time, I'm building a nonprofit, a for-profit. I'm out, I, I got to sh share everything with the world and show up to the world as a personal brand. I was like, I'm just like, I'm struggling. And he reshaped my thinking that day and gave me a gift that I will forever be grateful for. And this is in the letter that I'm going to be putting out. But he explained to me that as a SEAL, what, how I thought I was showing up as a leader was not really a leader. Hmm. I can't show up as Superman every day because then I'm gonna make everyone else feel like they need to. He's like, you need to, first of all, you need to be vulnerable with your team. You need to be honest with them because you don't think they're suffering and they got pain. If they see that, he goes, when I'm a SEAL, when we go in and we're, we're in a dangerous situation, mm -hmm. if my team doesn't know that I'm hurt, how do they know to come and pick me up and save my life? So he's like, you have to build and communicate with your team and build such a Completely relationship that, so that they know to help pick you up. They're there for you and you're here for them. Mm -hmm. He goes, that's, that's what makes a team. And he goes, and you need to focus on you. You need to focus on the in, like who, what's going on inside of you. You need to deal with that because you can't show up and be the powerful leader you want to be for this team, for this business, for anything else you want to do for the brand if you don't actually deal with it you know, what that suffering that you're dealing with and realize like whatever your own limiting beliefs are, whatever your, the pain that you're feeling at home, you need to, you need to work on that. Yeah, but you know, when you, when you hear stories like yours, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always fascinated by people. I love people's stories. Like your story to me, yeah, I'm probably going to share with my wife and I'm like, babe, let me tell you this guy's story. Because <laughs> to me, yeah. that's the connecting the dots, right? And the, it leaves a certain set of formula on what you see. You either see somebody who wants to prove a point, uh, you see a chip, you see a chip that no one knows about, whether it's bullying or a heartbreak, or you know, you had a older brother or something like that. But what's wild about it is it's almost necessary to make it to the higher levels. That's what's crazy about it. Meet Susie, the history of Pooh Puri. Push my body to its limits and then push harder. Could the bathroom odor be trapped? Everybody looking in from the outside would have thought I was successful, but inside I wasn't. It can be, and I can do that with oils. Season five, clearing the air, clearing your energy, be fresh. Susie Batiste, who built a company called Poopery. Have you heard of this? She built this thing, no, raised no money to 400 million in revenue wow. on her own, built an amazing team. She, she bought a church and you know, rebuilt the whole church, renovated. So we came here to, to meet with her. just arrived in Austin, Texas, and we're getting ready to meet up with the one and only CEO of Onnit, Aubrey Marcus. You now have every advantage that I have in the gym. It's a fair competition. <laughs> we'll see who bows out first.
Yeah, buddy. <sighs> that warm-up is no joke. Oh, fuck.